Okay, so we have this knowledge of acids and bases. What are the applications of this? And the application of knowledge of acids and bases is basically in the chloralkali industry. So the chloralkali industry is used to produce chlorine gas, hydrogen gas, and sodium hydroxide. And sodium hydroxide is actually really useful for a lot of things. So we're supposed to have a quick look at what the chloralkali industry does. Okay. So what they do is they get a concentrated sodium chloride solution. This is sometimes called brine. Sodium chloride is salt, and I don't know if you've ever heard the ocean referred to as a briny deep or something, B-R-I-N-E, brine. So sometimes instead of saying electrolysis of sodium chloride solution, they say electrolysis of brine. So what happens is you've got sodium chloride in solution with water, and it produces chlorine and hydrogen and sodium hydroxide. So now like this is like the most unlikely reaction. This will most definitely not occur unless you put in a lot of electricity. Okay. So this is actually a very, very um, carefully monitored process. And there's this membrane in the middle here. This is some membrane that allows a certain amount of ion exchange. But it's like, it's complicated. So what they do is they pump in a more concentrated solution of salt water here and out here they get out a less concentrated solution of salt water. And then there's an anode and a cathode in here. Look here are your two little charged electrodes. So this is going off to an electricity supply. This is like this ion exchange membrane keeps things in a happy condition. Okay. So here all of the little chlorine ions are in solution here from the sodium chloride. They're in solution. They come here. This must be an anode because anions go to the anode and chlorine ions are anions. So the anions come to the anode and here they um, become chlorine gas. So they go from being ionic to being covalent and the chlorine gas bubbles off and they collect it somehow and use it. And on the other side of this half cell, this must be the cathode because cations go to the cathode. Water comes in here, and at the cathode, the water comes to here, and out pops hydrogen gas because the water is dissociated, and over here, it ends up reacting to produce hydrogen gas, okay? And so if you take all the protons out as hydrogen gas, you are left with um, hydronium, uh, hydroxide ions, sorry. Remember, water is the whole time splitting up into a proton and a hydroxide ion. So the protons come over here, okay, and it, protons are cations and they come to the cathode. And so the cations come to the cathode and there they get some electrons and then they tootle off as hydrogen gas, okay. And that's, and then what's left once you've taken the protons out is the hydroxide ions and sodium hydroxide comes out the bottom. So the sodium ions are crossing this membrane here to meet up with um, the split water to give the hydroxide out here. So this membrane is actually a very important part of this. It's quite a clever membrane. It's a very bad picture, but you can see this membrane, the little green things are the chlorine ions. The chlorine ions can't cross the membrane. They get bounced off the membrane, but um, water particles can cross and um, but not the hydroxide ones. So it's complicated, but it's a very clever membrane and it allows water to come in here and sodium hydroxide to go out there. And here concentrated salt goes in and less concentrated salt goes out. And in the process, you've got chlorine gas, hydrogen gas, and sodium hydroxide all coming out of this very interesting electro electrolytic cell. Okay, why do we need sodium hydroxide? We use sodium hydroxide to make soap, to bleach stuffs, to make paper, to make um, polymer fabric like artificial silk. Sodium hydroxide is also a basis for other chemicals and we use it to purify water, so it's good to have sodium hydroxide. What do we need the chlorine for? We can use sodium hydroxide and chlorine to give you this thing, okay, sodium hypochlorite. So if you mix sodium hydroxide and chlorine, you get sodium, sodium hypochlorite and some water. And that is what is in your friend Jick. If you have a look here on the label, you will see how much percentage sodium chloride, sodium hypochlorite there is in there. Okay. But you've got to be careful with Jick. If you add it to hydrochloric acid, you're going to get chlorine gas. Don't do that. 
it's dangerous. Jika is actually really, really a strong base. And I'm sure you are aware of the dangers of JIC, but it's one of the things that comes out the chlor alkali industry. The sodium hydroxide and the chlorine are mixed to make the sodium hypochlorite, which is JIC. Also, sodium hydroxide is um, extremely important in hair salons. So hair is made out of a protein called keratin. Okay, so if you look at a hair shaft, okay, it's got all of these little strands that are linked with disulfide bonds, okay? There's some uh, weak hydrogen bonding, but there's also a lot of strong disulfide bonds. So here's all different shapes as it grows out your head. If you've got straight hair, you have a round follicle and the hair comes out like perfectly circular. If you've got kinky hair, the follicle is a little bit flattened. And if you've got really curly hair, the follicle is very, very flattened that it grows out of. And this very flat thing allows these disulfide bonds to be very strong. Okay, so here's this protein made out of amino acids linked by sulfide bonds. This is what it looks like under a, under a microscope, a scanning electron microscope. This is a piece of hair and it's got all of these little cuticles on the hair shaft. And normally they are all lying down and you can't do anything to your hair because these cuticles are protecting it. So if you want to do something to it, like bleach it, straighten it, curl it, because everybody does things to their hair, you have to make these pop up. And to make them pop up, you need a base like ammonia or sodium hydroxide. And now remember, sodium hydroxide it's got a first cousin potassium hydroxide that is called lye. So if anybody who's ever straightened their hair and it says no lye formula, you know that no L-Y-E, then it's because they've used a different base here to pop the hair follicles up. And the moment you pop this cuticle up, you can bleach the hair, you can dye the hair, you can straighten the hair, whatever. Okay. So you need to get these cuticles up and this is why um, bases from the chlor alkali industry are important here. Okay, so the amino acid in the hair makes these disulfide bonds. The more di disulfide bonds you have, the curlier your hair and your flat hair shafts. Remember that other picture under the microscope has got hair with lots of disulfide bonds. So to straighten really, really curly hair, you have to get rid of those disulfide bonds. Okay. And so this is what it would look like um, if you looked at all the atoms here. And this is your disulfide bridge. A sulfur and a sulfur is bonded in this long chain. And this is the bond you have to break. The hydrogen bonds are easy to break. The disulfide bond is not. So what happens is they add sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, which is lye. Okay. So what happens is it comes in here, it attacks the sulfur-sulfur bond and a hydrogen bonds onto the sulfur and the two shafts have now um, been separated. Okay. The, the, not the shaft, the strand of keratin. This is a strand of keratin. So the, the sulfide bonds are broken with the lye or the potassium hydroxide and um, you straighten it and then these bonds are gone so the hair can't curl back and then you must uh, rinse it in a dilute acid to uh, neutralize the lye and then it can get some new disulfide links okay because the acid will take away these little hydrogens but it's now the disulfide links are forming in a straightened hair as opposed to a curly hair and then if you've got straight hair you want to make it curly with a permanent wave or a perm and now they add ammonium thioglycolate which we don't need to know the formula of but this is doing exactly the same thing it'll break the disulfide bonds the keratins rearrange themselves okay and then you neutralize this with hydrogen peroxide while the hair is in those random curlers and then you get disulfide bonds in the curly shape so both straightening hair relaxing hair and curling hair rely on you breaking the disulfide bonds and then neutralizing it and allowing new disulfide bonds to form with straight with curly hair in a straight shape and with straight hair in a curly shape and if you're interested this is the glycolate thing looks a little bit complicated we'll just ignore that and then if you want to dye your hair as well most um, permanent hair dyes have an alkaline pH usually seven or eight so you put your hair in this alkali, 
the cuticle opens up all those little hairs on your the little protective shells on your hair shaft open up and then the pigment can go in under that cuticle and it can react with your hair to change the color with the original pigment in the hair but normally if you don't open the cuticle then you can't um, change the hair color and it's op this opening the cuticle that causes damage to your hair because undyed hair is usually much smoother than dyed hair because the cuticles are all lying on top of each other so here's what it's like it looks like this okay and you want to get inside here you want to get into the center of the hair shaft and you have to get through this outer cuticle so you put in um, something to relax these and then the dye molecules come in here and then afterwards you come back and you flatten them all again but it's never like it was before it started so we use to recap if you're still with me we use the chlor alkali industry okay the chlor alkali industry makes chlorine hydrogen and sodium hydroxide and we use it for such things as making soap bleaching stuff purifying water here's how we use sodium hydroxide to make bleach and then the other major use of bases is with fiddling with your hair straightening curly hair curling straight hair and changing the color of your hair.